Okay, here we go. Booting up the Pro HP DL380G7. Uh, <clears throat> been a couple of sets of updates. Been a few, two, three days since when I had trouble with it. Uh, uh, the new kernel update. It wouldn't. It won't boot to it. There's something wrong with it. And uh, <clears throat> so. I thought I would go. I hadn't rebooted. I just left it running. And uh, so I thought, I put it in the previous kernel and left it running. So I could use it. Because <laughs> it's really my desktop computer. And uh, so we'll see if it boots to that uh, new kernel. This time I'll just let it go through. Let's see. Can't really see. There's so much junk on the screen of this camera that I can't see if I might be cutting off the top of the screen. I can't. Well, maybe not. Actually, I think I could just go up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I might have been just a little. Okay, it's getting there. I didn't even take time to plug in a good mic or anything, so the sound's probably kind of wonky. Got a window open so you probably hear all that noise from the highway. Okay, here it is. 117100. I've been running on 51022. Looks like it's doing the same thing. <clears throat> yep. I didn't see anything that I thought would fix it, but it will what it, what it just got through installing was, uh, and they, I can't remember what it was called, but it's something else. I thought, well, what if that fixed it? You know, but there's only been two sets of updates, and they weren't kernel updates. But of course, if it was a kernel update, it would have skipped that newer one and went on to the newest one. I did see some file, uh, some commands. I looked a little bit, but not much. And uh, that. Uh, Saw one that said remove. So I saw one that would remove a kernel. I knew there was commands that would do that. I didn't look into it because I just haven't been feeling up to it. But uh, I'm going to look at this, but I'm sure it's the same thing as usual. Yeah, it's uh, looks like it's just the same thing, so it didn't fix it. So, uh, oh, I don't, I didn't turn the little deal. Uh, I was looking at it from behind now, I forgot I didn't turn the viewer on the camera anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna reboot it and get back into the other kernel and go on about my business. I just got, I just got done with my breakfast and I don't hardly know what I'm doing, so. I just thought I'd go ahead and, and and turn the camera on and make sure I got that if it worked. <laughs> Not to trip over everything. Let's see. Well, okay, I'll go ahead and reboot it and uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I have to hard shut it down. So uh, I don't know if I can show that too good. I've got the camera. The reason you can see the screen is because of the way I have the camera set. You know, with lighting in it. But, uh, okay, so it's in the closet here. And, uh, I don't know if you can see the, uh, at least you can see the area where it's at. I'll wait until it, I'll wait until it shuts down and the yellow light will be on. Okay, now, and funny enough, I haven't ever mentioned it in the video, but recently, just in the last week or so, well, two weeks, three weeks, I mean, I, uh, I uh, had 
the uh, well, well, mo a month or two ago it started. Uh, once in a while it would uh, roll the brake, and I had it plugged in on about a ten foot power strip going into another power strip because it was just short of being long enough to a you know one of the wall plugs and. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that's on that. I've got it wired coming around to this rack over here. This one I haven't seen a second yet, and I'm panned around. And uh, but I don't have the only other computer I have running is the laptop, and that's not too big a deal. It may be on a different. I'm not sure if this plug on this wall. Okay, that's that wall. Now this, that side. Now this side. I'm not sure if they're on the same circuit or not. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, they could be, and they may not be. So I finally decided, and what I realized was that <coughs> that light in the closet would stay on. <coughs> and I had a thought to do that. To, uh, you know, you, you can get, I've had, well, I've got some you know, damn near as old as I am, you know, my adapter just can screw into a lot of stuff. I can plug in, but this house is on two wire, it doesn't have a ground wire anyway. So um, it's, not, it's not changing anything, you know, like it's doing now. And, uh, <coughs> And of course, the wiring is the same going to the light socket as it is the wall plug. Just no different size, you know, not bigger or anything like that. So it's just a matter of how many things you got on the same circuit. But they, you know, they do them. Uh, well, they do them usually. Whatever's going to use the least wire would be the smart thing to do if you're a house, if you're an electrician wiring new houses. You know, if you're an electrician balancing the load in, in a house, then you would do what balances the load the best. And you can change it in the breaker. But uh, this one has never been balanced uh, that I know of. Uh, I grew up in this house and then uh, <clears throat> came back later, you know. But uh, let's see. I need, oh, I got to sit down and get to the keyboard. <sighs> just about missed it. I hope this keyboard's working. I better turn this other one on too. Just in case. Okay. Neither one of them are working. Do the same thing again. Let's see what we get. I guess it's going to be the same thing. Yep. So what I'll do. work uh, neither one of the keys that's what it did that first day I do not know why in the world it both you know the wireless keyboard will work uh, both of them won't work at all if they're both hooked, connected to now I got a KVM switch down there that you wouldn't see let me go ahead and reboot this thing Okay, it's booting back up now. Uh, so if I switch, yeah, I got a four port KVM switch down there. And uh, if I switch to just one of the other computers, then that disconnects my, my regular USB keyboard and then I can just turn on the, uh, uh, the wireless keyboard and it'll work. Or at least, well, one, last time I tried this when it was it didn't work until I don't know. I really don't know what made it start working, but let's see if it works. So I'm only got the wireless keyboard and mouse hooked up now, and when it comes back up, uh, we'll see. And uh, yeah, and anyway, so I use one of those uh, adapters. I've got two of them in there actually. One that's why I can turn the light on and off. So first, I've got the one with uh, nothing but uh, no switch on it. I've got two of them in there, don't I? I can't see. Well, anyway, I don't want to miss my cue here. Uh, so, um, I believe I have two of them in there. And um, so one has the, power, the, the, the server, the power strip plugged into it. And the next one has a light bulb in it and a switch on it. And uh, it has plugged 
One of them may not. Yeah, that one may not have plugs on it. Anyway, I better sit down. But anyway, that's what it's running on, and it has one going with that. That water ski board has been on for days and I didn't realize it. Uh, I turned it off. <laughs> there it is. So it should work now. When uh, when it gets around to it. I mean, I shouldn't have started this. <laughs> oh, that's the light back in the It's not working. Could be when you, if, when you turn it on, keyboard, since I had it off by accident, maybe it, it wouldn't recognize it in that particular spot in the group picture. Too late, you know. So I guess I'll have to do it again. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I keep you know, messing with it. But when I went to uh, turn on the mouse, it was already on. That's when I figured it out. And it's been two, two days at least since I've messed with it, I think. Oh, crap. That's like, what? Third, fourth reboot now? I just remembered something. I think I think what I did to get it to work last time was the USB sound card that I have in there normally you just you know doesn't give any trouble but once in a while it gets whacked out somehow and I think when it goes into that screen where it hangs up is what whacks it out it does one of the things that whacks it out so I unplugged it this time I think that's why it just won't recognize either one of the keyboards because it causes some kind of trouble but then once it get it Rebooted it back into the other kernel, everything's fine. And I had, I did reboot once, I think, and to, you know, just to make sure I got back in the right kernel. Well, I can't remember. So anyway, yeah, once I get it, that's why I didn't shut it down for two or three days. Uh, I reboot it. Uh, I've kind of been going back and forth between whether I leave it on all the time or turn it off. I really, I've just been going by the temperature outside. If I'm hot in here, I shut it down. Like at night, I go to bed. If it's cold outside then I was running to keep me from getting cold because I got a vent in me going into the attic in the closet there and that'll make me get cold if there's no uh, heat rising you know so and the fan I have a fan in the, in the ceiling too so if you just turn the fan off and it just comes on through I, I installed a I installed a dryer vent with a flapper valve but the fans weren't not strong enough got a new one but I haven't put it in yet Well, here we are back at uh, HP Cold Iron Blue Screen, the beginning of it. Let's see. Wireless. I always forget how long it takes to get through everything. And I've got it on where it shows everything, so it takes a little longer than it would. Would did when I first got it, but I I couldn't remember all these 
to the seeds and you need to know them when you're stuck, you know, when something goes wrong. That's when you need to see that. And it's not, so I'll leave it like it is. I said, I said it on this, you know, let's see. Yeah, I think it's that yes, the sound card that does that. So, okay, so I'll loop that next to the mix. You know. and that's one I've been running on. That's one good thing about uh, when every version of it, well, not all versions let you do that by default, but sometimes they set up Grub to hide the previous, you know, the other channels down the line. Because this one, you, you're, when you need them, you really need them. So, once I get finished booting up, so let's go ahead and hit the, hit, hit the arrow key, one of the arrow keys. I always usually hit the up or down arrow key. And it'll bring in the kernel and show you what's going on. <coughs> if you're having trouble, you need you can watch it and you watch the arrows that's looking red. And that's where you have to push, but you can't stop it. Well, there might be a, no, I don't. Never, don't remember ever seeing a way a way to pause the boot to read it, you know. So, but you can look at the boot logs and see. And, uh, I did finally, I did finally figure out. Okay, it's, it's ready to log in now. I figured out in Cockpit there's a pause button in the in the in the log area. You kept it was like refreshing so fast that I couldn't read it. And uh, so let's do that. And then the other regular log. Files viewers, I, I went ahead and looked back into them and saw, you know, kind of looked through everything. Yeah, the text is so small I couldn't read it and I was tired and I didn't feel like messing with it. But uh, Haywire. I don't know what it does. Still, I can't even see it anymore, whatever it did before. I must have just forgot to hit enter at the right time or something. Because I typed my, yeah, I typed my, I might have hit space bar or something. I typed my username and and then it was like more like a tab than a space, and then my, my password was right on the same line. But then when I hit enter, it all went away. I don't know. I did. But uh, okay, log in. And I just hit the up arrow key because start X was right there the last time I typed in this spot, you know, this kernel window. And uh, so I have to type start X, and then it'll. Go into the GUI. That's because of the way I installed it. I used the uh, net install. It's only like 650 megabytes in the regular Make Desktop Installer. And it was 2.1 gigabytes or something like that. Right at 2 gigabytes. And my it, my USB sticks are only 1. Point, well, they're 2 gigabytes, but they only really have like 1.8 gigabytes in them. It won't fit. And, uh, I may end up having to buy me a bigger USB stick. See, I like SD cards better because they're more versatile. You can use adapters and put them in all different places, you know. The, the micro SD cards. And they're usually cheaper than USB sticks, too, for, for size, you know. So we're back. And, uh, that's all I'm going to do right now because I'm going to be so darn out of it. <sighs> okay. Uh, well, anyway, I thought I would show that. I'm hoping it would work. All right, bye.